Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Ugo Investing. Happy Friday. This past week has been relatively stable compared to what we've been seeing in the month of February. The market is down a couple percentage points, but it's not as bad as what we've seen in the past or the 20% gain that we saw last week. So in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the news events that kind of stuck out to me, some that were just kind of surprising, and then three of them that go back to videos that I've made in the past. And I wanted to go back and talk about ways that I was wrong because some of the companies that we're gonna be talking about today, I misjudged them a lot. And if I had taken a position in those companies, I would have lost a lot of money. So I think it's very important on this channel to kind of look back at uh, decisions or comments I've made about companies where I was definitely wrong. And in this video, we're gonna go back over a couple of them. Some of the topics we're gonna to talk about in this video is the Tesla earnings report that came out yesterday. We're going to be talking about NRZ, the 12% dividend company uh, that I talked pretty good about in the past and now has fallen a lot. We're gonna talk about Luckin Coffee, which is the Chinese coffee company that's competing against Starbucks. Uh, I talked very good about it and it has fallen 80% since then. And then we're gonna wrap up the video talking about the recent Macy's news and the news that they've been kicked off of the S&P 500. Also, if there's any topics or companies you'd like me to go over in future episodes, please leave them in the comment section down below. I have plenty of topics I wanna to talk about, but I wanna know what you guys wanna see from this channel. So let me know in the comment section down below. Also, before we get started, I gotta say that I'm not a licensed financial advisor and I highly recommend talking to a professional, someone that can find you the best places to put your money going forward. In addition, I really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button as it would help my channel out a lot. Getting close to 2000 subscribers and I thank you all for that. I've been talking a lot on this channel about how we really don't know the extent of the damage that coronavirus is doing on uh, individual companies and just doing on the overall economy. And so when earnings reports started to come out, I was not feeling too hopeful about them. And when Tesla was coming out with earnings yesterday after the bell, I was not feeling very good about it, just based off of just kind of what we've been seeing. And surprisingly, they beat expectations on a lot of things and the stock was up a lot after hours yesterday. Based off the beats that they had in their expectations, the stock was up 17% after hours yesterday. And that has somewhat held this morning, but at this point, a lot of those gains that we saw at the end of yesterday are starting to fall, with the company being up only 5%. So it's interesting that people responded so positively towards the earnings report, but we've kind of seen the sentiment that people are not that bullish on it overall, and a lot of those gains that we saw at the end of yesterday are starting to fade away. The main number that people were really excited about is the beat that they had on their number of deliveries for quarter one of this year. And people were expecting around 80,000, and that's actually a revised number. I went and I was kind of curious to see if those expectations had been revised as a result of COVID-19. And from what I saw, it seems like they did take that into account. I think the original expectations were close to around 100,000 to 110,000. So they beat this expectation of 80,000 when they came out with 88,000. And people thought really positively about that, and the stock got pushed up a lot. When you look at that change over quarter one of last year, that's a 40% increase, which is an incredible boost to their numbers. But when you look at how the company was kind of viewed a year ago, compared to what it is right now, you can see a lot of changes. So that 40% is a lot, but there has been a lot of momentum that the company has been seeing in the past six months that's pushed the company up so high and it has kind of contributed to it falling so far so quickly. One of the things I'm going to be watching is quarter four of last year, the company came out and said that they uh, expect to comfortably uh, have 500,000 deliveries in the year of 2020. And at this point, it's not looking that likely. Obviously, you can't plan for a global pandemic to start, but, but based off of this 88,000 that they had in quarter one, I'm expecting that they're going to maybe come out with maybe 350 to maybe 400,000. From what I've seen, a lot of the automakers are having a really tough time. In my video on Wednesday, I talked about Chrysler coming out and saying that they're gonna have a really tough time with sales in this last quarter as a result of coronavirus. I think that Tesla is in a significantly better position than a lot of the other automakers, but I'm not feeling that comfortable in taking a position for them for a long-term investment. The main reason is coming from the fact that I don't want to invest in speculative stocks right now. We've talked in the past about how Tesla got pushed up so high because people were speculating on how high it could possibly go, and the momentum of people continuing to buy the stock pushed it up so high. And so now as the market has fallen, it's come down to around $450. And so that is a huge drop from where it was just a month ago. In addition, U.S. auto sales dropped by one third this past quarter, and that's just with coronavirus being an impact for about uh, one and a half, maybe two months. So I think this is gonna be a tough time for the automakers, but as I said, I think Tesla would do better than the other ones. From all the analyst ratings that I saw, everyone seemed pretty steady of around $450 to $500 for their price target range, except for I saw one guy that had $850 and I kind of brushed that away as being unrealistic. But from what I've seen, a lot of companies have it as a hold and that price target is pretty similar to what we're seeing right now. So that's just what I'm seeing. Not gonna be taking a position anytime soon, but I love following Tesla. All right, now it's time to start talking about the companies that I was very wrong about. The first one I wanna talk about is Luck & Coffee, ticker symbol LK. This was a company that popped up on my radar when I was doing my the top 100 stocks on Robinhood during the month of December and January. 
when Luckin' Coffee kind of jumped out to me because I believe it had a 96% buy rating on Robinhood. And that kind of jumped out to me because I had never heard of the company before. Basically what you need to know, it is a Chinese uh, coffee company that's been competing a lot with Starbucks and the Chinese market. And when I looked at all the fundamentals and just the history that the companies had, I was really impressed from what I saw. And it made me really question my positions that I've had with Starbucks. Starbucks has had a really tough time breaking into the Chinese market and seeing how well Luck and Coffee had been doing uh, in that market made me consider actually selling my Starbucks shares and buying Luck and Coffee. But the news event that came out yesterday is making me feel way better about my decision to stay with the US company instead of going with the Chinese one. The news event that came out yesterday is that Luckin Coffee is under an internal investigation about potentially faking sales numbers. And as a result, the stock fell around 70 to 80% during yesterday's trading. And so that is not a great sign for a company that had fantastic numbers. And that was the main reason why I talked so greatly about it. This 80% drop knocked out about $5 billion in market cap. And this is a huge deal for a company that was one of the bright spots for the Chinese IPOs on the US stock market. And now it brings up a lot of question marks about the uh, potential risk involved with investing in Chinese companies. One of my favorite investing personalities, Jim Cramer, has been very vocal in this past 24 hours talking about the risks involved with investing in companies in China that aren't the giants like Tencent or even Alibaba. Luck and Coffee is just another example of some of the dangers involved with investing in Chinese companies based off the differences between the regulatory bodies that they have in China and what we have in the US. So there's just a lot of risk involved in that. If you want to do more research, there's been a lot of history about the Chinese companies coming onto the US stock market and having a lot of problems. I believe it was in the mid 2000s if you want to check that out. But this was just a good learning experience for me. I was at the point in my investing career where pretty much everything that I saw that had good fundamentals and technical analysis looked really solid to me. But now this is a, a good wake up call that just because everything looks good on paper doesn't mean that it's actually a stable company. And Luck and Coffee dropping 80% as a result of potentially fraudulent sales numbers is a good example of what I need to watch out for in the future. And I'm very happy that I didn't sell my Starbucks shares and buy Luck and Coffee instead. All right, the next company that I need to talk about my mistakes is with NRZ, New Residential. And this is a REIT company that when I first found it, the reason it really stuck out to me is the 12% dividend. There's a lot of rules and regulations behind REIT companies saying that they have to pay, I think it's like 90 or 95% of their free cash flow as dividend. So that's why their dividend was so high. And I felt very good about looking at the company and the overall stability that I had seen. During 2019, where the market went up around 30%, uh, NRZ went up around 10%, but also paid a 12% dividend. So when I was looking for potentially stable investments for the future and potentially getting into the dividend investing, uh, NRZ looked really good to me. And now I've learned from my mistakes. The stock went from $17 down to $3, and it's down 29% just today. And there's been a lot of problems that have been associated with the company. And the main thing is the cutting of the interest rates. When I was doing my research for this company, and I was looking at the potential recessions that we might have seen, this was before uh, coronavirus had started taking over. But some of the things that I was looking at as potentially thinking that NRZ was a stable company to invest in is when we had the financial crisis of 2007 to 2009, a lot of it was based off of poor mortgages. And that was something that I thought that the government had learned from. It would not be a factor in a potential recession in the future. But with the feds rapidly cutting interest rates down to zero, this has done a lot of damage to REITs and NRZ specifically. The main income source for NRZ is mortgage servicing rights or MSRs. And as a result of this accelerated mortgages because of the cut to zero for the interest rates it has done a lot of damage to the company. And so the stock has continued to fall. They've had to cut their dividend and things are not looking really good. Just last week, people were talking on my video about it, asking if I liked the company at around $7. And when I looked at it, my eyes kind of lit up. I saw a lot of things that I really liked. The overall stability sure had been broken because of this cut to the interest rates. But when I was looking at the option chains, I saw easy 20% plays based off of covered calls and puts. And I went and reached out to my dad because I was like, this looks too good to be true. Tell me something that I need to watch out for. And he warned me against it. And since that time, the stock has fallen 50%. So uh, thanks for my dad for that. But it's just an example of things can look too good to be true. And these high dividend plays become really risky when the market starts to fall. In addition, this is a great learning experience for the understanding the idea that I think it's really important to only invest in things that you fully understand. I done some basic research on what REITs were and the fact that it gave me a 12% dividend kind of clouded my judgment to the rest of the red flags in the company. So fully understanding the business of the companies that you're investing in is a huge deal because during a time like this, if you had invested in NRZ just a couple weeks ago, you'd be down a lot of money because of some very obvious signs that you could see in the market. So with NRZ, this is a company that looked too good to be true, and I'm happy I stayed away from it. 
And then finally in this video, I wanna briefly talk about Macy's. Macy's was in the news a couple days ago because they have been removed from the S&P 500. And they've gotten to the point where they're down 70% from their 52 week highs. And Macy's has been a company that I've been very vocal about, liking the potential that I saw. It had built a support around $14 at the end of last year and I took a position. And as it fell through that support, I'm happy I cut losses. I think I bought at 15 and sold at 12, so I definitely took a loss. But looking at the stock now, it's down around 450. So that would be a huge loss for my portfolio. Macy's is a great example of when the market starts to become very volatile, you want companies that are doing well during the longest bull market that we've ever seen. So my, my idea of taking Macy's on as a very risky investment that I think could pay off in the long term was a, a okay idea at the time, but as uh, the news events started to unravel about coronavirus and the incredible volatility we've seen in the market, it was a good example of when things start going sour, you start getting rid of your speculative stocks as soon as possible because they don't have the financial backing to survive a really tough time like this. I want to make this video because people think very highly of Tesla, so I wanted to talk about the news events related to that, and I also wanted to go back and talk about some of the companies that I thought really highly of in the past, but I've been proven wrong in the past couple weeks. So I think it's really important to do research on all these companies so that you can have a, a very broad view of the overall market, but when you make a mistake and you have poor judgment about companies, I think it's important to go back and see the mistakes that you saw. So this was the point of that video, was to point out some of the flaws in my judgment in the past so that I can improve in the future. Obviously, I'm not a professional, I'm just a guy that's been doing this for a little bit longer than a lot of people, um, and I'm just trying to learn along the way. So let me know what you thought about my video, what you thought about the Tesla earnings, Macy's, NRZ, and Luck and Coffee News in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this episode. Stay inside, and I'll see you in the next video.